Um, Minister, the droughts and bushfires have undoubtedly deterred some young Australians from going into or even remaining in agriculture. It's never been more important for the government to offer incentives for that particular industry and up to $22,000 is now available for individual grants for innovation. What sort of issues and complexities can be solved through these grants? Yeah, look, we've lost generations of young people out of agriculture and, and out of regional Australia, and it's time to bring them home to understand mm. they just don't have to work on the farms behind me, but in the new jobs, the new jobs of science and technology that transforming agriculture into this sleepy old industry, into one that's very sexy again. It's, it's using the smarts of the 21st century. And we're saying to the young people that are in the research and development to look to ways to actually uh, face up to some of the challenges that agriculture face. And, and last year's winner looked at how, how to challenge salmonella in, in the egg industry, uh, making sure that our food security is even more reliable and more more robust and, and being one of the most uh, secure in the world. Uh, and that's, that's why we're saying these, these small grants go a long way in making a big difference, not just in bringing young people back to agriculture and back to regional Australia, but making a big difference at the farm gate and putting more money into people's pockets. Because if farmers are making pocket money, putting money in their mm. pockets, then invariably uh, the next generation will want to stay and be, be in the agricultural industry. And so this is a small, a small gesture in making sure that those young people that are in research and technology can cast their minds directly into the big challenges of agriculture and whether that be uh, through biosecurity, uh, whether that be through our export markets, uh, whether that be through a new gene of grain or, mm. or genetics within, within the dairy industry. These are the types of things that we're asking them to do because we want them to be empowered but have the passion to actually go and undertake that research and so this $22,000 will give them the kickstart to be able to go and do that. Yeah, one of the, because uh, it does the agricultural industry, particularly farmers, it gets such a tough run in the media because um, unfortunately all we do is report on the doom and gloom of it. As you say, it doesn't appear very sexy. It's about changing that narrative. One of my favourite things to do uh, is at the Easter show. Obviously it got cancelled this year, but there's a great section there uh, that has that farming sector and it always shows the coolest innovation of robots and all of these awesome things that are actually happening in the agriculture cultural industry. How, I guess, uh, from the pool of people that you've seen over the past years, this is, I know you said the salmonella um, example there, are there any other kind of examples or any particular things that you would really want people to go into? Yeah, and actually you touched on a really good point. We're our own worst enemies. We talk ourselves down. Mm. And in fact, the only time you hear from us is the bad news story. Yes. Uh, and, and We're trying. You know, when I left school, we try and do good ones. Me, I oh, know, no, no, it's not your fault. It's actually, it's our own fault. I mean, when I left school, my old man said to me, I wasn't academically gifted, but I couldn't come back on the land because it was all too hard. Well, now we're actually making some money at the farm gate. We get that stuff called rain and there's money to be made, but not everyone can afford to go back on the land. And that's why these new jobs that are coming in. And in fact, we're not just uh, complimenting in this with this $220,000. We're actually getting 80, 80 new iFarms that we're going to put in schools so that people, mm. in, kids in schools, understand what's happening in agriculture and effectively what that is is they'll get to understand how to grow crops use the hydrology the agronomy and 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 all with the touch of a button and, and yeah. this is un what you can understand is our farmers are using multi-million dollar machinery yeah. uh, they're not hicks with with straw between their teeth these are professional business people that are using cutting edge technology and this is why we want to continue to make sure that we sell this story but particularly, as we say, last year's winner was around looking at one of the challenges we face around, around salmonella. Uh, some of the other things are, are looking at streamlining our export markets in, t in making that more technologically advanced, in, in connecting from the farm gate through to the dinner plate, not only here in Australia, but in, in, in Hong Kong or in China or in Japan, uh, making sure that they understand that we can sell that story of what we do and be loud and proud about what we do in the agriculture industry of producing the best food and fibre in the world, mm. but, under, but letting people everywhere around the world understand how we do it and the environmental custodianship that we undertake in producing that for them. So those mm. are the types of things that each industry is looking at specifically. And, and while the egg industry looked at salmonella, uh, the hoard industry will look, will look at other parts uh, of, of the production system around mm. new varieties that are, that are more pest resistant. Uh, and that means we reduce our, our reliance on chemicals and fertiliser. Mm. Uh, and you only have to look at the cotton industry. We've seen a 90 
95% reduction in the use of, of chemicals over the last 10 years because of the introduction of genetics yeah. into our cotton crops that mean we don't need to spray as much. Uh, and that yeah. should be something we should be very proud of as, as a nation. And we're leading the world on that and we can still do more, uh, but we want the youngest and brightest to continue to do that. Yeah, well, uh, I have actually met a few people over the past few years that were uh, born and raised in the city and have taken, you know, to the land and gone out and gone into it, which I think is awesome. That's uh, absolutely what we should be seeing more of and seeing that as a really viable career for young people. Well, changing uh, topics slightly, but staying on that digital path and that innovation, you've also announced this week that the CSIRO has been awarded a grant to digitalise compliance systems for beef and horticultural exports. To me, that's surprising that it wasn't already happening. Is this uh, long overdue and what benefits will this system have on that industry? Yeah, look, I've got to say that the agriculture industry has been the slowest to embrace the technology in terms of our of embracing our export partners mm. on a digital platform. Uh, and we've made a commitment of $50 million in the last budget to put in place a, a, an IT system that will be compatible with that. But what we're asking the, the CSIRO to do is to bring together that on, on one app uh, mm. that will that'll streamline the process, cut the red tape so that our exporters can simply bring together all the different mechanisms around around the export controls that are put in place and bring them on one platform. So that's a one-stop shop. And, and that's going to save millions of dollars uh, for exporters and farmers and mean that we get more money back into this country. Yeah. We, we're a country of 25 million people. We produce enough food for 75 million people. So export markets are so important. And the more that we can streamline that and make more money out of that export market, then the more that we get back to the farm gate. And, and what the CSRO will do is embrace the digital platform Platforms to streamline all those protocols that we uh, quite proudly protect because, uh, quite frankly, uh, we have uh, the cleanest and greenest product in the world, but we need to continue to be able to trace that. Mm. And this will give real-time data so that if we do have a breach, then effectively we can trace that back very, very quickly to the source, and, and that'll mean that we'll be able to eradicate any, any pest or weed or disease that might have uh, re uh, reared its head uh, and be able to challenge that straight away and eradicate it straight away. Does but that give mean confidence it will... to our trading partners about what we're sending. Does that mean that it will isolate it as well so you won't have to shut down an entire industry because you'll have that tracing, you can just potentially shut down that one particular producer? Spot on. Potentially yeah. what this will do is it will give real-time data uh, to our regulators to make sure that if we do find a breach that we can trace it right back to the farm gate yeah. and we can isolate and eradicate. That's effectively what you want to do with biosecurity uh, because if you don't do that, then it can get away and then it becomes management rather than eradication. And, and the quicker we can eradicate, the, the less cost it is to the Australian taxpayer and to the farmer and the more protection and confidence we give to our export partners about the product that we're giving to them. Yeah, isolate and eradicate. It sounds pretty similar to the COVID uh, situation at the moment. But, uh, Minister, <laughs> the government has also announced that uh, close to 200 people from Vanuatu will be allowed into Australia, despite the current travel ban, to pick fruit in the Northern Territory. Now, is this an indication that the job seeker is too high if we have jobs that need doing here in Australia and we can't get locals to do them? Well, let me say that the old job seeker, the old dole payment, uh, was at one point half what it is now and we still couldn't get them to go and do this work. Uh, so I, I think you've got to be careful to say that that's the sole reason. Uh, where those payments are at the moment does make it challenging for farmers to attract people to come out and work, but there's also some other issues that we've got to put in practical terms, and that is that many of the people that are unemployed are nowhere near where these jobs are. And you've got to say to those people, uh, do you really uh, expect them to travel a couple of thousand kilometres for six weeks work and then turn around and come back. Uh, that's a challenge that we've got to understand in a practical sense about what the challenges farmers face. So mm. while we do have a, a significant number of people unemployed, they're not necessarily close to where those jobs are all the time. Uh, we're going to continue to work through this issue and, and we have had a heavy reliance on, on overseas workforce in, in, in particularly the unskilled portion of the agricultural sector in picking the fruit. Uh, but we're going to continue to look at how do 
we how do we streamline and incentivise those that are on Job Seeker uh, to take these jobs up, and even those that are at university, uh, they can't go and backpack around the world. Why don't they go and backpack around Australia uh, mm. and make a quid while they're doing it, uh, pick fruit and enjoy Australia and stay safe? You're safer here from COVID-19 than anywhere else in the world. So the government's working quickly, but. Farmers don't have the luxury of sitting and waiting uh, for mm. workers to turn yeah. up. Uh, they going they off simply and... have to get their product off. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They've got to get it out of the paddock onto the plate when it's ready. Uh, so we've got to look at as, as many measures as we possibly can. This is one that we've looked at. It's a, it's a pilot, and we'll continue to see if there's more uh, more measures that we can make around these Pacific Island season, seasonal worker visas. Uh, but we'll also look to see how we can continue to incentivise Australians to undertake this work. And I just say to Australians, it's not it's not low paid work. I think the the award, the award rate is around $24, $25 an hour. Uh, so you, you are getting rewarded for the effort. I uh, understand that it can sometimes be hard work, uh, but it is, it is rewarding and it does lead to other, other uh, jobs within the agricultural sector. Agriculture is sexy again. There are jobs right through the agricultural <laughs> sector, not just picking fruit. Uh, there are a lot of trades that are required out here. And let me tell you, you're a lot safer where I am from COVID-19 than you are in a capital city right now. Minister, I reckon that's your best selling point of the day. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon.